another edition of Blender versus the industry, and this time I'm going to be looking at Blender versus Maya on how they handle soft selection. Okay, this is kind of a uh, fine tweaking element when modeling, and let's go ahead and kind of dive right in. And at the end of the video, I'm going to kind of say which one I like better. So I'm going to go ahead and start with Maya here, and you can see that I've got this um, Cyclops creature here. And um, if I wanted to uh, adjust some vertices here, I could right click, go to vertex. And if I grab one vertex, I can see that it, it moves like this. And, or if I grabbed a bunch of vertices like that, it moves like that. I don't like that. I want a soft selection. In other words, I want it to kind of uh, feather the selection. So if I press B, I can enter this soft select mode instantly in Maya, B as in boy. And if I hold down B and middle mouse, I can see that I'm middle mouse dragging and dragging over like that. And I can see that it's growing the selection. And where it's yellow, it's going to have full influence. Red is going to be kind of 50% influence. And then where it gets black, there's going to be zero influence. So I can kind of see here that it's not so obvious, you know, that I'm pulling these, um, just these top vertices up, I can see that I, it's blending, or in other words, this soft select. It'll also work in scale or whatever I want to do to it. So again, let's say if I wanted to make his hands longer, I could kind of just drag over some of, the, some of this. And then again, B, middle mouse drag, and you can see that I can kind of change this influence zone. And then I can kind of like, I don't know, bring that down and kind of alter this. So if I was going to be working on kind of a cartoony character or if I would need to make some subtle adjustments on something, you can see here how it's really nice to have that ability to have soft selection. And again, if I want to change it, I can just kind of do that and then I can kind of change it um, to have kind of a little bit more fine control. So you can see here, um, if I double click, on the move tool itself, I can see that here's soft selection, and you can see this is what's happening. So if I press um, B, B is the shortcut for soft select, and you can see that it's turning it on or off. And then here, if I wanted to have kind of a more finite control or if kind of adjust that fall off, I would be able to kind of select my um, interpolation here and how it's kind of blending on the corners or on the edge. Um, and then here I could kind of manually change that, but I feel like it's better to, to do it with B and middle mouse, okay? I can see that that's actually causing that slider to change. So you could kind of play around with um, settings in there if you wanted to get a little bit more specific with it. But let's go ahead and see how kind of Blender handles soft selection. So if I come in here, I can do essentially the same thing here, but I feel like if I select this guy, um, press tab to go into edit mode, I can grab a vertex. So I can grab, like, let's say this vertex here. And again, if I move it, and I'm just going to go ahead and use the move tool rather than the shortcuts, I can see that I can kind of pull that vertex up, a single vertex. Um, or if I dragged over some. Now, if I drag over them, let's say if I drag over like these, and I'm trying to get all the top of his head. I'm only dragging over the ones that I see. So if I wanted to drag over the ones on the top of the head, I'd have to make sure that I'm in wireframe mode. And now I'd be able to kind of grab all of those. Now I can see that, again, that's not soft select. If I want to enter soft selection, I would go up here. And this is what's called proportional editing. And now I can kind of see that. And you might say, well, that, that doesn't really look like it's a soft select. That looks like it's just like that how it was before. What happens is when I start moving this, now if I middle do the middle mouse wheel, I'm moving my influence zone kind of after the fact. So anything inside of that circle after I start moving it is what's going to be influenced. So I can see that all of that's now influenced, but nothing kind of below the chin is influenced because it falls outside that circle. But if I increase this, now everything inside of that is allowed to be. And just like we saw how you could kind of change the um, the blending or the um, yeah the the fall off of it, you can see you can also change the fall off here in Blender as well. 
But one, one thing that's different, I feel like, in here is that if I change, ah, that's too much, I can change it as I'm kind of moving this. Where in Maya, I kind of feel like you have to kind of uh, figure out what influence you want, and then you're kind of committed to that influence. Here, I feel like we can kind of just grab something and then say, ah, no, I want more influence or less, and, and I can kind of like dynamically change it as I'm moving it. Okay, I feel like that's kind of a, it's a subtle thing, but I feel like it's a, a nice, um, a kind of a nice feature. Then I would have to just remember to kind of turn off proportional editing when I'm done with it. But, um, you know, that's pretty much it. I feel like I like the color coding of Maya with that kind of that fire to, you know, yellow to, to black. I think that's a really nice visual thing. But I feel like if I had to give thumbs up to one of them, I, I'd still... I think I'm going to give thumbs up to Blender here because I feel like I like the ability to adjust the um, the influence live. Okay, that way I can kind of like again just kind of fine tune it exactly as I want, and I feel like that's a again a slight difference, but I think it's a great as far as um, modeling. Once you get into this stuff, I think that you you will appreciate that kind of that additional feature of it. So you, again, I'm, I'm adjusting his chin. I'm like, ah, that's too much. I'm just going to bring this down. Oh yeah, I like that. That That's better. Okay, so I can really kind of fine tune that. So again, if you know some tricks, whether it's in Maya or Blender and you want to share that, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this video. If you found this helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. All right, see you guys next time.